Um, hello, so today we are going to take a look at a couple of collection functions in Python. Um, we are going to focus first on reduce um, and just see the usage of it. Um, so reduce basically, um, you give it a, a collection, that collection can be a collection of values, um, primitive values, it can be even a collection of um, classes, data classes or whatever classes you have. Um, and what it does, it basically it accumulates the value sta starting with the first element of your list. And so and it uses the whatever function you give it. Um, and then it starts out by combining the first and the second. And then it gets um, the result. And that result is what's called the accumulator. Um, and then, um, then it, um, it keeps applying the function of that accumulator with the new value. And then the result as the new accumulator and the, uh, the result of that with the next value, right? So for example, with a product, what will happen is first with this here where we reduce, um, so this would be our accumulator here. Let's call this accumulator. Um, then we want to do the product. And so first we'll do five multiplied by two, we get 10. And so we use that value as the accumulator with the next function call. And so we'll do a 10 multiplied by three, uh, get, we get 13. 30 sorry and then we use that 30 as the new accumulator multiply it again by 10 and that we get 100 right so this is pretty classic um in all programming languages uh it's how reduce works um but let's first run it on this example um let's just count out this one and so you can see here the first example does give us 300 um now just be careful to not use it um, where it doesn't make sense, right? Because, um, for example, in some cases, other functions that um, Kotlin standard library uh, gives us make more sense. So let's say, for example, here, if we use this, um, do we have, check if we have product. Do we have a product functions? No, but if this was a sum function, then you could just use sum by. Um, which is deprecated and we could use sum of, right? You could use sum of um, and just give it um, what you want, right? Um, here in this case, because it's numbers, we just need to do sum. So if, if, if you are doing reduce plus, um, choose to use sum because sum is a lot more readable. Um, but for cases where there is no um, other available functions in the standard library, then you could, you, you could use reduce. Um, now, um, let's, let's take an example of maybe books, right? With prices. So if we do books, um, and we have a list, maybe book one, uh, let's call, we need a data class for a book, right? So, uh, book, uh, would need title and we will need a price. So let's call, let's have the price as uh, float just so that the numbers are valid um, and so here let's say title one and then maybe let's say it's the price is 14.5 and then we'll need another book um, let's say the title is uh, title two and the price is maybe 17.99 or something all right um okay looks like there is yeah let's just say this is a double um, okay, so if we use that, then here we could do books. If you want to just like get the total price for a customer, let's say, then in that case, um, the sum of the price makes more sense. So, um, so using sum of here would make more sense than using reduce. So let's just see what reduce will look like. Then we, we, we need the price because reduce works only on the values themselves. Um, and so here we would have to do map first and then do reduce with the accumulator, the value, and we would do accumulator plus value for the price. Uh, let's just print and just make sure we get the same thing. Um, now the, the sum of is definitely more readable. So in this, then this entire line here, so definitely keep the values are the same, pay attention to that. Um, and maybe um, you can even define your own higher order functions like like Kotlin standard library is doing here just so that it's more readable. Um, 
Um, cool. Um, similar thing applies um, to things like, um, let's say, for example, uh, numbers using uh, min of, right, to find the min value of the numbers based on some criteria. And so here we could, for example, we want the ship's book. Um, so you could do uh, books min of using the price. This is a lot more readable. Um, now, another thing I want to mention here is, let's say you try it on an empty list, right? So let's say we try to reduce um, on an empty list here. Um, it doesn't work. Um, if you take a look, um, this is because it calls has an X, so it's, it, it assumes that the list has values. Um, and so to avoid, um, if you, if you know you may get an empty list, always make sure to use um, just reduce or nil variant um, so you can avoid having that problem. Um, and this returns null, right? Um, and this is pretty straightforward. It's somewhat very similar to the reduce function implementation. It just checks if um, the list or whatever collection or iterable you give it is not empty. Um, um, yeah, so that's for that part there. Now reduce, you can see here what it does. Um, if we take a look at reduce like this, we just numbers and we accumulate the strings together. Um, if we take a look at this, the it prints the number one, two, three, two, four. Let me just show you that this is this function here. Um, Yep, so it prints them in the order left to right, one, two, three, four, five. This is pretty important because let's say you wanted the reverse order um, um, for whatever reason. Uh, it doesn't, uh, this, this is trivial here because you could just reverse the list and then reduce, right? Uh, but in some complicated cases you may have, you may want to do something sophisticated. Um, let's say maybe you want the prefix sum from the right um, uh, without modifying the original array. Um, so you could, if you want basically to do a similar reduction like uh, like with reduce here, but from right to left, um, again, you could use reduce right here. Um, and so with reduce right, let's just um, surround it with this so that we can distinguish it. It's pretty similar to reduce, except it goes from right to left. So you can see that's why we have six first and then five, four, three, two, one. Okay. Um, uh, the other thing is that let's say you had an array like this one um, and you wanted to calculate the prefix sum. The prefix sum basically means for each index, you add up the number to the previous sum. And so for this one, we should get uh, zero first and then we add one so one and then we add two we get three we add three we get six so we get the idea again there you could use running reduce which does the same thing as reduce but gives you a list of the intermediary value intermediary value that we, values that we get on each reduce call right and so um, you can see here for this function running running reduce with the sum will give you uh, zero first and then one and then you add two so three and then you add three six and then you add four ten and then five fifteen and that's the idea there um, um, another similar function to um, to reduce is fold um, and fold basically is almost like reduce except with one thing um, one difference is the initial value and so in, with reduce, it doesn't use an initial value, it just takes the first two elements. Um, and so with the um, with fold, you give it the initial value that you want to start with, and then it applies the function with the initial value in the first element of your collection, and then it, it does the same thing as reduce, it starts applying the result uh, the same function between the result and the next value and then again the result and the next value until the end. Um, the only difference is that it starts out with the initial value we give it and then it it um, pairs it with the first value, applies the function and keeps going like that. Okay. And so here for example we want uh, just product, not doubled, 
just a product but initially we start out with minus one and so um, we should just get the product but uh, negative um, and so if we run it let's actually call fault test here and that's exactly what we get okay um, it does have very similar properties to reduce so almost everything we said here does apply and so let's just make sure that that makes sense so for example if we do um, let's say numbers two um, and let's make this an empty list of integers um, and let's apply numbers two dot fold with an initial value of minus one and let's have the same thing prod multiplied by element okay uh, let's see what this will give us So different, it's different than um, reduce in that it does accept an empty list and you get just your initial value. Okay, so that's first. Now what about the uh, doing the reverse order? So let's say we wanted to fold maybe with a, a string and have the string just starts out like this. And let's say we get a, a list of labels maybe um, similar to here. Okay. Um, and we use our labels and let's say here this is the accumulator this is the accumulator let's just we add say we add our elements and see what happens and so it starts out with the initial value and then it keeps adding the the values labels here right um now um let's see if also um the same thing that we saw here with reduce right works with uh fold um, as well. Now, the only thing that I forgot to mention here with reduce, right, is that um, you can, s if you take a look here with reduce, normal reduce, the accumulator is the first parameter and the value is the second parameter. And for reduce, right, it's the reverse. And pay attention to this because if you don't, uh, that may make your function not behave as you expect. Because reduce here has a function that has as the first parameter the accumulator and then the second one is the, the value of the of the iterable as you can see here which is t um, but here with reduce right um, the operation has the accumulator as the second parameter and the type in the list or the iterable um, is t and so value first and then accumulator okay because if you if you do it like this and name them in a mixed way then this will give you actually the exact same thing as reduce right because this is actually the accumulator and this is the value and you just flip it flip it the order right um but going back to fold um similarly to reduce right we have fold that goes from left to right if, you, if we also have fold right that can go from right to left so the same conventions applies and kathleen just does this where basically it um it tries to not surprise you. If you expect a function to be there, it should be there. And so for symmetry here, we should have fold right, and we do have it. Um, and so here, again, um, let's just make sure we have the right uh, property. So you can see the accumulator is first, and so that's what we have here. And for fold right, the accumulator needs to be the last one, and that's what we have here. And so let's see the difference. So we'll, we have just a string of labels, and we start off with just double star here. So let's see the difference between the two. And you can see the first one is left to right and the second one is right uh, right to left um, okay um, yeah so that's pretty much it for today's video um, I hope this was useful um, stay tuned for more uh, videos on collections um, collections functions and working overall with the uh, Kotlin collections uh, please like and subscribe and see you on the next one bye